everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo for Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I've got Ben Lesnick with me, the community manager for CIG, and we're going to talk a little bit about gifting and possibly about something else that um, somebody else brought to my attention. So Ben, welcome to the show again. Thank you for seeing us twice in, two day, in three days. Hey Batgirl, thank you for having me on. It's very good to be on the show again. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to set us back. I have a program that records my audio, and for the first time ever, it failed me. Um, well, we were talking the last time about the gifting policy, and I asked you to go over what the CIG um, thought process was on it. Can you do that for us one more time, please? Absolutely. So the changes which uh, now are taking effect tomorrow, May 1st, there's going to be a 30-day wait period for new accounts. This should not apply to any existing citizens. If, if you are an existing citizen, you can go ahead and give things. Um, but the 30-day wait period to make sure that we don't have scammers creating fake accounts and laundering ships. Um, the second big thing that is going to affect a lot of people, at least for a little while, is a single gift limit starting tomorrow, starting May 1st. So you can gift a ship once and then it's locked to that account. Okay. Now I did some research since we talked last and I found a couple of incidences where both you, Ben, Rob, well not both, but all, all four people I could look at, you, Chris, Rob, and Eric have all said in different points that when the game goes live, this outside of the game way of moving ships around will be gone anyway. Is that true? That's absolutely correct. Right. Uh, that's always been the intention. So what process do you see inside of the game for us to be able to move ships from one to the other at some point? Will there be like a galactic market where we could sell ships at some point? Absolutely. I mean, it's going to be you know, as immersive as possible. There'll be you know, used space car lots and this sort of thing. And, and uh, there'll be you know, in-game guarantees. It, in, inside the game world, it'll work a little bit differently than it has so far. All right. So I, I know that this gray market, we've been talking about it for probably the whole seven months I've been involved, eight months I've been involved with Star Citizen. How bad has it gotten in terms of what Chelsea and Alexis and the rest of the people on customer service have to deal with? Um, basically that there was a straw that broke the camel's back in this instance where there was one of the, these trusted middleman traders who it turned out was taking advantage of everyone and there was a whole spider web of things to undo uh, and we, we just said enough is enough we need to change this policy for now okay. uh, so without the game being live I guess it really doesn't affect people as much as if the game was live and there was no way to do this can you tell us okay I'll let you talk go on oh no uh, basically I, I would like to say this is basically as draconian as the gifting limits will be ever we're, we're already talking about basically a way to reduce this. We have a, a new web system that Turbulent is going to be developing. I can't give details yet, but we know about all the situations where people would legitimately need to give something more than once. Uh, right. All these contests, uh, these people who want to share ships, uh, right. all sorts of things that actually build the Star Citizen community and culture. And I mean, I, I sat down with Ali and Chelsea and everybody, we came up with a list of all the situations that are coming up. And we basically said to Turbulent yesterday, this is all the stuff we need to figure out. So that's all okay. in process right now. Now, when we talked last, we were talking about maybe starting a thread. Where can people put their suggestions at this point on where, you know, and what pro the processes should be in the future? Yeah, hit up uh, general chat. Um, if it's something you don't want the world to see, maybe you're one of those grave market traders, uh, feel free to PM me. Uh, no judgment here. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in fact, and I, I would like to say, we know that a lot of these people have legitimately been trying to help make Star Citizen a success. There are lots of middlemen who are helping people get what they want. They're not taking anything. Uh, it's just a few bad apples. Yeah, I've been lucky that when I was looking to upgrade my ships when I thought LTI meant something, I found people that were legitimate. But, you know, when I think about it with new ships coming out all the time, I don't know if that LTI is going to mean anything 18 months from now, you know? Yeah, I mean, let me stress again, uh, LTI, okay. not a big deal. Okay. Uh, okay. Do not risk your hundreds of dollars or do not pay a premium for it. Uh, it's a little reward for earliest backers. It's not a game changer. You like how I walked you into that one, right? Thank you. <laughs> kind of held your hand through it. All right, so the second piece I want to talk about is, this is kind of out of left field. Somebody mentioned to me that somewhere in 
the uh, website, on the RSA website, it was announced that Chris would allow people to steal corporation funds. Uh, just, I'm sorry, steal what? Co corporation funds. Like, say the corporation has a has a bank and has a lot of money in it, and say it has ships and you know has a lot of ships, mm -hmm. that it would be possible for somebody to infiltrate you, be like that second, you know, like a double agent, and then leave with all your stuff. Uh, I've heard this. Um, I think it's one of those situations where people take something Chris is thinking about, they spin it into the worst possible thing, yeah. and then it's a big deal to everybody. Um, but Chris is absolutely thinking about ways that people can be infiltrators, they can steal information, they can right. you know, sabotage systems. That's all very in a very early system right now. Uh, we're not coming up with a way that people will be able to steal your ships you paid hundreds of dollars for. Thank uh, you. And what, what about what about corporate funds? Um, you know, I'm, I don't think we know how corporate funds are going to work yet. So I, I would I would absolutely say we have not come up with a system where people are going to steal. Mm -hmm. Basically, there should never be a situation where people steal actual money from one another. That's not what this game is about. Well, I, I see it as a tier of different things Chris has said over time, and I think so, that's why they said this. There was a situation where somebody asked a question mm -hmm. about, you know about the great bank heist of Eve, right? 1.8 yeah. trillion-esque. Mm -hmm. And they, they, there was something on record of Chris saying, yeah, that, was a, that, that built immersiveness in that game, and what we're looking for is the same, same type of immersiveness. Mm -hmm. I could see that. So yeah. I'm saying that. Yeah, yeah, I know you could. And I know you can't speak for Chris, so... And I know sometimes you guys feel like Chris says things before you guys even know what's being said, right? Well, I mean, he he has a very pure vision, and when he when he wants to add a feature, it's because he thinks it's going to be more immersive, it's going to be cool, it's not because it's a way to scam people or hurt them or anything like that. It's... Uh, he, he's thinking of experience. I mean, he, he thinks in terms of experiences. Definitely, he, he he sees a ship and says, "What is this role?" He sees a character class and what? How do we make the game more than just a space simulator? Uh, I, I see that every day. I mean, we were talking about the first person stuff just on Skype earlier, and uh, you could just tell that that's what Chris is thinking. How do I? How do I go beyond? Uh, that's awesome. So I know there are things that I got to go and grab Rob and Eric for, like wanting to know if there was ever going to be an end game voice chat system and stuff like that. The big thing that I have before we go has to do with uh, everyone's waiting and waiting and waiting on the DFM. So we know yeah. that it's coming in the next two weeks, few weeks, month, exactly. whatever it is. Yeah. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna leave that out. The, but the other piece that we've all been waiting for too is the second drop of the organization system. Is that soon after DFM in your opinion? I would say that's going to be soon before DFM. Uh, at least multi-orgs. Yes. Uh, in fact, they're in QA right now, okay. and we are hoping for Rella next week. Okay. Well, then confident then. enough to say that. And if we miss it, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, everything's looking good right now in QA. If good. if they get through this cycle this week, then they want to launch next week for multiple orgs. So does it come with a change in like the interface for what that we're using on the website right now for organizations, or? Uh, something of a change. We'll have a whole fact about it. In fact, I'm going to sit down with Turbulent on Friday to put that together. Uh, All right. If you need help, I could write it up for you. <laughs> okay, well, that's all I got for you. Thank you so much, Ben, for joining me tonight. And you go. Oh, no problem. All right, you take care. Have a good one. Okay. Don't go anywhere.